everybody, Steve here doing some more studying and learning about uh, hydrogen production or HHO production. And there are some things that uh, some, a couple of people have asked me questions about uh, why I use uh, sodium hydroxide, which um, is often used as drain cleaner, and this is 100% sodium hydroxide. If you want to check that out, Robic. Um, versus baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate. And then there are other people that say use distilled white vinegar. <clears throat> well, instead of kind of like just picking the most charismatic person and using what they use, I've been doing some reading and I found out that there's a difference between like the uh, sodium hydroxide and sodium bicarbonate. And so what I want to do is kind of go over some information and uh, point out some of the things that I found out and things to consider uh, as an electrolyte for using in your hydrogen cell. Now the cool thing is, is that uh, hydrogen cells are real flexible and so if I don't have any uh, sodium hydroxide, I can use baking soda. And that's what's really cool. And I can use a lot of other stuff too. But if we're trying to get down to make the most efficient cell and we need to look and, and uh, consider a lot of information. So anyway, uh, I'm going to show a couple slides and I'll do some talking and explain some things and we'll take it from there. And then you can see what I found and you can do your own research and see and make an informed decision. So um, anyway, that's it. So let's continue on. First thing we're going to look at is baking soda, which is also called sodium bicarbonate and sodium hydrogen carbonate. And you get the little Na plus and the O's and the H's. I don't know what that is, but uh, anyway, we find out that baking soda it starts decomposing around 122 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius. Now, when we look on Wikipedia or the MSDS sheets, which are the material safety data sheets. Uh, for baking soda, we find out that the melting point range is anywhere from 50 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius, or 122 degrees to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's depending on the sources. Um, and we also see that baking soda gradually decomposes, it turns into sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. So there's some interesting information there. So let's go on to sodium hydroxide. Uh, we see the cute little picture of the balls there. I had to put something in there. But we see that the uh, sodium hydroxide, it decomposes at around 318 degrees Celsius. In other words, 604 degrees Fahrenheit. And the melting point uh, is around 604. Uh, and if you'll see both those referenced in Wikipedia and the uh, material uh, safety data sheets. So. When we look at, at the melting points and where it starts to decompose that, when we compare baking soda against uh, sodium hydroxide, we come up with... So in comparison of uh, baking soda versus sodium hydroxide, we see that sodium hydroxide lasts longer in heated environments than baking soda. And that means less cell maintenance, and that's always a good thing. And personally, I've also noticed that sodium hydroxide has less of a residue or that brown tinted water uh, than when I use baking soda. And again, this comes down to less cell maintenance, uh, and that's a good thing. So these are the reasons of why I'm going to use sodium hydroxide rather than baking soda. So anyway, there we have it. Um, the difference between baking soda and sodium hydroxide. And when, what's really cool about uh, all this HHO cell stuff is that uh, we can use lots of different materials for an electrolyte and to help in producing uh, HHO gas or Brown's gas or hydroxy, that stuff when you light it, it, it blows up. Uh, but what we really need to look at is to take information, research, and study it. And there's trade-offs with everything. Um, I've noticed that the difference between using sodium hydroxide, I don't have to use as much of it as I do with baking soda to get the same type of production. 
Uh, like with this, I've only had to use like uh, two teaspoons where I've had to use like a tablespoon or more, uh, maybe two or three tablespoons more to get the same type of production. And again, it comes down to testing to check it out yourself. Um, Internet's got a lot, a lot of information, Wikipedia, and I'm actually doing that reading and comprehending thing and uh, looking and seeing what I want to do because I want to build a cell that doesn't require a lot of maintenance. And so you have to, if that's your goal, then you need to pick materials that will help you reach that goal. Um, if you don't care about uh, having to do a lot of maintenance on your cell and adding a lot of baking soda and, and you like doing that, then hey, maybe go the baking soda route. Me, I'm lazy and so I'm going to be going with the uh, with that 100% uh, sodium hydroxide. So anyway, um, I wanted to share that and let some people know because some people have asked me already why I use one thing over another. And I'm really starting to compare the different electrolytes and, and trying to research and, and what the goals that I want to accomplish. So anyway, for all you new guys out there that didn't have a clue like I didn't have a clue, uh, take the information that people give you and double check on it, you know, because uh, you can't go long, wrong. You learn something and uh, kind of like with this, I learned that uh, with the sodium hydroxide, it's more resistant to heat than baking soda. And... Uh, I don't know, some cool stuff. So anyway, uh, that's it, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.